Well, hi. Uh, we're so sad that this week we can't be uh, together in Sheldon in Norway for Discipleship Week. And uh, we were due to think about the character of God. And what better place to do that than the majesty of the Norwegian fjords uh, to consider that subject. Uh, so we're going to have to do this um, with our imaginations. Uh, but still, rather than do nothing, some of our team are going to be sharing some short devotions on each of the subjects that we were due to cover this summer. And so the first instalment today is called Indescribable. It's not a word I use very often. Some will know it from the Christian song of the same name. The dictionary says that something indescribable is extreme, it's intense, it's beyond words. And it makes me think of uh, the view from a high mountain, uh, which no matter how hard I try, is just never fully captured on camera. Equally, I can try to describe it, but there's something about uh, such a view that words struggle to do justice to. And when we try and describe God, I think we often just don't know where to start. Would we describe him as holy, awesome, faithful, loving, wise, all-powerful, forgiving, just, all-knowing, ever-present? Now, I hope that we would echo all of these things. Um, but in reality, uh, even these, these words only begin to scratch the surface of what God is really like. And so I want to share just four thoughts today um, that will help us just unpack this a bit. Firstly, God is revealed in creation. Paul in Romans 1 says that God has made himself plain to us. And in the next verse, Paul says that creation shows us God's invisible qualities his power and his divinity. And because of this, Paul says that it leaves us without excuse. God's invisible qualities are extraordinary, but according to Paul, they're clear to all. And yet the sad truth is that humanity, although we knew God, neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. And we exchanged the truth about God for a lie. Creation speaks volumes about its creator. And for that reason, I love being in the mountains because it's, it's a place where I experience that. When I come face to face with the grandeur of creation, it points me to God. Do you know, it really matters that God is supreme and that his glory is revealed in the world around us. Because if God be God, then what have we to fear? Even a little understanding of the character of God will begin to transform our perspective on everything. It makes a difference to, uh, to our suffering, to where we place our trust, to where we put our hope, and to what we do with our time, our energy, our money. It makes a difference to how we view life amidst a global pandemic. Secondly, God is supreme. And in Paul's letter to the Colossians, uh, he includes a brilliant section about Jesus' supremacy over all creation. It's about his sufficiency in being fully God um, and in, in all that he accomplished on the cross. Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn over all creation. In him, through him and for him all things have been created. He's not just before th all things but in him all things hold together. Jesus has supremacy in absolutely everything. Reminds me of Psalm 8, uh, where we find David, the young shepherd, uh, writing about what he's seen as he stared up at the stars on those dark, lonely nights. And he presents us with a contrast, namely that our majestic, all-powerful, creative God wants to know us. He says, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? And how extraordinary that God wants to have a relationship with us. And we find our sense of meaning, therefore, in relation to the God who made us. Thirdly, God is the source of all. Uh, when Moses uh, encountered God at the burning bush, God asked him to go to Egypt and ask Pharaoh uh, to set his people free. And Moses responds with a series of excuses uh, that I'm sure we can all relate to. Uh, one of those was, well, what if, if Pharaoh asks, 
who God is. And in response, God tells him to say uh, that he is, I am who I am. That is how almighty God defines himself. I am who I am. Why? Well, I think if, if God is the source of all things, then he cannot be defined in relation to anything else, or he, he wouldn't be God. And we see this in some of what the Bible says about God. For example, the Bible says that God is love, that God is holy, and that God is hope. And God gives meaning to, that, to the idea of love, of holiness and hope, because he is the source and the definition of these things. Finally, um, God deserves our worship. God is supreme and knowing him changes everything. Our lack of understanding, our lack of words should lead us to a place of worship and adoration. He is great and most worthy of our praise. We're not meant to be able to get our heads around him. That's what makes him God. Acts Act 17 says that God does not live in man-made temples or need to be served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, Paul says that God gives everyone life and breath and everything else. And God has been involved with his people throughout history because he wants us to seek him and to reach out for him. The fact that God is indescribable should motivate us to be seekers of God. There is so much to be known of him. And so our goal uh, for this series this next week is to begin to scratch the surface of how great our God really is. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we, we worship you now uh, and praise you for who you are. Thank you that you are revealed in the, in the creation around us. Thank you that you are supreme over absolutely everything. Thank you that you are the source of all things. And Lord, would you help us to respond appropriately in worship and adoration. Thank you, Lord. Amen.